Uh, hey Ben, I'm quite new to ZBrush. I design robotic concept art-ish stuff and do most of my stuff in CAD since it's hard surface. I'm trying to learn ZBrush to complement some organic forms. Haven't figured out how to separate the parts properly. Would love to see if you could try your hand on my model. Cheers. Uh, so robotic concept artish stuff, CAD software, mostly hard surface. Very cool, very cool. All right, let's see what we got going on here. So you got some masking on here. Let me just clear that really quick. I'm not sure if I'm looking at this the right way or if it's supposed to go this way. Uh, obviously this is something, you know, very, very early stages, very rough. So we can take a look at how we would clean this up. So, <laughs> thank you. So you did get it, sweet. <laughs> It's gone, it's gone forever. Good luck. You'll have to scroll back through and find it. Um, so this was sent to us by Nicholas. Very quickly, for your, for your pleasure, Nicholas, I'm gonna link you a video that I uploaded recently of a stream of a hard surface tutorial. Have my words. And I will share that in chat with you guys. So you can hopefully find that Nicholas if you're here. Um, but yes, I go through and I make a, a clock. I, I'm not gonna open it back up, it's fine. I, I, I create a clock, do some hard surface modeling in ZBrush. Uh, but you're looking, you said specifically for some more kind of organic kind of stuff. Um, part of a robotic leg without the mechanical parts. No problem, no problem at all. So I'm not exactly sure, you know, what you're going for. You don't have a reference here. Um, but I could show you maybe some hard surface tools very quickly to kind of like get you headed in the right direction. For instance, when making something like this, I find that hard surface stuff is much easier to do with low poly geometry. Uh, you mentioned like splitting stuff off. So let me show you an example. Let's say this section here. I don't know the orientation of this. So I'm gonna say that this is like the top of some kind of mech leg. So let me duplicate this. And what I'm going to do is use a selection lasso brush, holding control and shift. If you hold control and shift, you'll uh, by default have a select rectangle. But if you come up here and click, you can swap to the select lasso. And then what I'm going to do, now that I have that selected, I'm going to scroll down to split. So I'm under tool, subtool, split, hidden. So now I have two separate subtools. I have solo mode on here so that I can see. And down under tool display properties, I'll turn on double on both of these just so I can see backside facing polys. Then what I'll do is run a quick Dynamesh. It looks like you were already using Dynamesh on this. Just make sure that we're not super incredibly high here in scale or anything. So Dynamesh doesn't break on us. So I have split these off into two separate objects. I find that this is a, a good way for you to kind of get headed in the right direction, probably. You want to start working with separate subtools, separate objects. Uh, they're called subtools in, in ZBrush. So what I'm going to do is start cleaning up your piece. And then for instance, I like using stuff like the H polish brush, maybe a trim dynamic. I really like the pinch brush as well. You can find all of these just by hitting B and hitting the first letter of that brush, P for pinch and grab the pinch brush. Go away. And then I'll just use with lazy mouse on, which is also located under stroke, lazy mouse. If you wanna copy my settings here, these are the settings that I use with my brush. So check that out. And then we will just stroke along your edge here and tighten up your surface. Time for some JoJo. Did I say something JoJo-esque? I tried watching JoJo. I got, I'm actually pretty far into it. I'm actually very far into it. I, I should say that I am watching JoJo. But let's continue pinching along some of these edges and just try to get you know, something hard surface, but still maybe a little bit, uh, a little bit more shapely, a little bit more interesting visually. And kind of got these like these segments here that feel intentional. So what I'll do is I'll use something like a trim dynamic brush or again that H polish brush. It doesn't really matter here. Just kind of plane that out and hit back with our pinch brush. 
Maybe just try and plane some of this out. We're just trying to make something, you know, visually interesting, right? I don't really have a, a goal in mind. And I'll just kind of continue to play around here, pinching and cleaning up, maybe blend some of these edges a little bit more towards the front. Maybe we can roll that down using another one of our trim brushes. Try to pull these edges together. And the more you use your pinch brush, the more your geometry will get pinched and obviously pinched, but the more your geometry will become like pulled together. So I'll just do another Dynamesh by control clicking and dragging on your canvas. And just like that, we can start shaping up and cleaning up some of this geometry. I'll be honest, um, it's pretty hard to just control your surface in general in, in ZBrush, in, in sculpting, in digital sculpting as well. Um, it definitely takes some time to get used to. Uh, it's not really like other 3D applications, it's quite a bit different. But luckily, that tutorial link that I shared does have some poly modeling stuff in it. The majority of it is poly modeling, like 95%. So I think that would be a really good place to start as well. Just maybe a few of these brushes can help you out, help you get in the, headed in the right direction. You do have to have a a little bit of control here though to do some of this stuff nicely. So I'm just kind of planing out the rest of this. I think we'll just do kind of one part here, one piece. I'll very quickly just kind of pinch and maybe finish that off here for, for where that's gonna connect and sync up. Then maybe you can start working on some of the other parts. Uh, what I will show you really quick though, something that I like to do uh, with some of this stuff. So for instance, if I wanna make this uh, like a tight edge along this shape, what I might do, I just duplicated it so that I don't, you know, we can go back to the other one if need be. I'm gonna use my mask lasso brush and draw a mask and kind of outline this, this line here. There's a bunch of different mask brushes, but I'm just gonna use this one to do most of that. And for that top part, I'll switch to the mask pen. Mask this off. So that entire bottom area is masked. This does not have to be perfect. I just want it close to this edge. And then what I'll do is press Control W, which will, here first, let me do a group visible. So down in your poly groups menu, do a group visible, and then Control W will poly group whatever you have masked. So that bottom portion was masked, Control W, created a poly group from that mask. And then what I can do is come down into Ziri Mesh. I would recommend that you turn off Freeze Border because it looked like you had that on for your geometry. I'm not sure why, but I would recommend not using that. Uh, instead, use Keep Groups with your different poly groups. And when you remesh this, I'll just set the poly count pretty low, maybe even lower, it doesn't matter. We'll just do 1K. We'll do that and ZBrush will look at the border for these two um, polygroup shells and create an edge loop between those. So now we have something that's lower poly, but around this edge, it's starting to retain that form a little bit better. And you can actually go, like I said, you can go very low with this stuff. So if I drop this all the way down to point 0.1, I like doing this a lot for organic and hard surface shapes. Give that a second to calculate all the way down, beautiful. Now if I smooth that out, we still have the same basic shape. We, maybe we wanna project some of that. Uh, maybe we wanna make some more poly groups to, like if we wanna retain that hard edge. But for this specific area, I'm gonna switch over to my Z Modeler brush, hover over an edge, hold the space bar, click on crease, edge loop complete, and just crease that edge. And then when I smooth that out, or you know, add some subdivision levels, that edge will remain creased. If you want to make that still a harder edge, but maybe not quite that hard, what you can do instead is bevel. So hold space over the edge, switch to bevel, edge loop complete. Do a bevel. You can control how tight you want this to be. I'll just make it 
pretty tight here. Let's go, let's go even tighter than that. Let's go like that. So now when I smooth that out, you can see that we're getting a little bit of a softer edge. Yes, it's still, you know, a tight transition, but it's starting to be a little bit softer, a little bit more clean through there. So we're starting to get a pretty cool and interesting shape. And again, you can use those different poly groups to kind of set that up. Um, this one, again, is just with Dynamesh. A little bit messy, right? So maybe a little bit more clean if that's what you're going for. But I would try out those couple techniques. Uh, again, how we started that was we just took some of the geometry with a selection lasso and then just split it off into its own piece and started remeshing and working with it more from there. So I think that would be a good next step for you. I'd love to see what you end up doing next. Definitely come back and share some images or something. Is there a key display plugin for ZBrush to show what buttons you're pressing? Uh, no, no, there's not. Uh, I, I pretty much, it, if there's something that I do too fast, let me know. I showed you where everything was in this menu and I'm just kind of using this quick pop-up menu to redo some of the uh, like split hidden. I have that in here for me. So I showed you where that was in the split menu. So I just very quickly will do it in there or something like that again. But I do not have a key display uh, program installed and by default ZBrush does not do that. 